welcome to another live stream coloring. I'm really excited to see so many of you already here. The chat is going crazy. Um, I've been trying to say hello to everyone, but it's already getting out of control with the amount of people joining, which is awesome. So thank you for jumping in. I do want to give a little bit of a shout out to some of our members. Um, in particular, I want to say hi to our Teal members. So I noticed that Riley is here and Melissa is here and Jennifer is here. So hello. And Caitlin, sorry, <laughs> Caitlin was early in. Um, but also thank you to the rest of you that are joining as well. It's so good to see you. I saw Renee's just popped in as well. Um, so it is really exciting to have you all here. And for those of you who don't know what the membership is, we also have a private discord and we do some extra live streams um, with our members from time to time. So um, they are all getting to know each other very, very well, especially our two members because we actually just had um, earlier this week, our first video Zoom call and a bunch of us got together and it was video for everyone, not just for me. <laughs> we all got to talk back and forth um, and just got to know each other a little bit better, which is awesome. So we're gonna be doing more of those throughout the year. Um, but for anyone else, like if you're a member and you're not in our Discord yet, um, it's for silver, gold and teal. And so please let us know and we'll um, get you connected because the Discord is a lot of fun and it's a really great place to get to know each other, to get to share our wins, even to get to share our ugly art. We have a whole channel just for that now and it's a lot of fun. Um, but welcome to everyone. Today I'm going to give us a little bit of time to allow some more people to join, but I will um, let you know what the plan is. We are going to be colouring Small Victories by Johanna Basford. Um, I haven't coloured anything in this book yet. I only just bought it, <clears throat> I think, last week. So I have chosen four pages and I actually need you to help me choose which one we'd like to do today. So if you've got the book, feel free to colour along. If you don't have the book, that's okay. Um, grab another colouring page anyway so that you can do some of the techniques that we're going to be doing or just watch and chat. Also happy to just have that. So the pages that I would like you to help me choose between today, we have first this beautiful little bird in this wonderful circle. So this was one that I thought would be really fun to colour. I also wanted to try and choose some things that I think we can actually complete in about two hours. So we're going to see how we go with that. I tend to colour slow, so hopefully we can make it happen. Um, then we have this one here with the water and basically like a really fancy houseboat. So this looks quite fun. Um, oh, Nic Nicolene's here as well. Good to see you. Let's have a look. The third one I've got is this ice cream with a house on top, <laughs> which is quite fun. Um, so that this could be a great one with the different challenges of the glass here. And then you've got lots of different colors here. This might be a good one. Oh, color palettes is a whole nother thing. We'll come to that after. Um, and then we've got this page. And the reason I thought this page could be cool is because we've got lots of little individual projects. So we can actually take a different approach on different ones. We've got some here that are glass jars. We can work on some glass techniques. Um, we've got some clouds here with the sky. We've got lots that are just like flowers and simple things. And then we've also got a key here, which we could do a bit of a gold pattern on. So this is one I thought could offer a bit of variety, but I do need your help to vote. I thought to make it easier, I'm going to put these here. I photocopied them just for the vote so we can see all four and we're going to put up a poll. So while we're still getting into this, please have your vote on which picture you would like us to work on today. So hopefully we can see all those. <laughs> Let me know what your preference would be in the poll. Don't just comment because um, there's no way I can keep up with that. So when we get this poll up in a second, you can vote on that. And um, then we'll pick the winning one to have a go at today. So it's completely out of my control. Oh, here we go. Votes coming in quick. So while we do that, um, we... I've already mentioned we had a great video call with the Till members earlier in the week, um, but just so that you know as well for today, we are going to be using the Faber-Castell Polychromos. I've got my big collection here beside me. It usually sits behind me in videos, but I've put it here today so that we can access all the colors. Um, but if you don't have Polychromos, that's okay, because the whole reason I've chosen the Polychromos is because they're, they're not as um, easy to blend as something like a Prismacolor. And I know that I've been guilty of using Prismacolor in so many of my videos that people don't know how to translate it to other pencils because the Prismacolor are so much creamier. So I thought if we choose something more like the Polychromos, 
that's something that if you can blend with the polychromos, you can blend with anything essentially. So even if you have something like Crayola, you can still make this work. I'll be giving you the numbers as I go of the pencils, but if you don't have the same numbers, just try and find something close in your other pencils and it should work. You can also help each other out in the chat. If you're using a different pencil set that someone else is using, maybe you can kind of team up to work out what the colors are. Um, but we'll see how we go. So how is our poll going so far? Shane, you can keep me updated on that. Shane's here as well, everyone. Um, if you have or haven't met Shane before, he's my wonderful husband that sits behind the camera. Hi, everyone. So he's going to be watching the poll. How are we going so far? Do we have any obvious winners? Um, at the moment, it is D. D. So that is our mix one. I do think that that's a really cool idea because that will give us options. The challenge there is then working out which one we start with. <laughs> that's, that's a problem for later. Um, and I think because pretty much you never finish the page, so this this gives you the ability <laughs> to sort of get part way in and still take the win. Yeah, I think I think there's there's some truth to that. I don't know if it's a bit of a dig or just that's just reality. <laughs> By the way, welcome Livy Brown to our silver membership. We will see you in Discord after this to keep hanging out with us. And actually, for those of you that are in the Discord, if you're coloring along, along today, I would love to see after this live posting what you ended up doing, whether it was the same page that I've done, same colors, different colors, or whether it was something completely different. I would love to see what you're working on. Doesn't even matter if it's finished, as you know. Um, while we are waiting for a few more votes and a few more people to come on, I want to share with you what I've been working on. So the last few months, actually, I have been relearning how to draw. My members already know this. They've been seeing all the sneak peeks behind the scenes. They've even had a tour of the sketchbook already. <laughs> but later this week, if all goes to plan, we will be releasing our next video. And it is all about me relearning how to draw over like, it was over 90 days, but I did about 50 days of drawing in that because life gets in the way. And that's just how things work out. But I tried to draw as often as I could. I tried to draw every second day at the most or every day if I could. Um, and I've been trying to rebuild my skills in areas that I'm not confident in, in areas like character design that I usually avoid. I'm definitely that person who's guilty of putting hands behind the back so I don't have to draw them. <laughs> so I decided to really venture out and challenge myself. It was a very surprising journey and I really hope that you find the video this week helpful. Um, I got to speak to Proko, who is an amazing artist and teacher here on YouTube. And he also has a website full of resources to help you learn as well. I got to speak to Zephyr, um, James, who has also been on a similar journey of learning to draw later in life. And so he, we talk about a lot of the challenges and the mindset issues that we have. And I got to go visit Jazza again. And we actually spent a couple of hours just sitting and drawing together. And that for me was actually by far the scariest of everything. Not because jazz is scary, jazz is wonderful, but because I was really put out of my comfort zone in what I was drawing. So that is a video I think that will be really worth watching, whether you're someone who wants to learn to draw or has been through that yourself, or whether you're someone who is trying to take on other creative things and feels a bit out of your comfort zone it's a really good way to watch someone else go through this. And I tried to show as much of it as I can on camera of the experience of doing everything for the first time. It was, it was pretty intense, but in that process, I've also been working on my new coloring book. So the new coloring book is something that I hinted at a little bit last year. And it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. And a lot of the learning to draw came from me wanting to make sure this coloring book was better than anything I've ever done. And so I've been working on that in the meantime, and we're actually, we've sent off for a sample so that we can see what the paper's like. We've got the cover designed. Again, the members have an early look. I think actually it was just the Teal members have already seen the cover and the new title, and I'm not ready to release that publicly yet. So that one's pretty top secret for now. Um, but I do have a couple of pages that I thought I should show you while we're waiting on this vote. So... Um, this is one of my new favorite ones that I've done. This one here, sorry, it's all crowded now. Let's push these out of the way a bit. So this is one of the new pages that I've worked on. And so I'm really leaning into this concept of like, uh, kind of like a hidden overgrown forest nature, like out in the wild, but everything's just kind of 
ta- the wild has kind of taken over, I guess. So I have got um, this one here is one of my favorites of the new book. I've also got this one here. So these ones are finished and ready. They're obviously not going to be on this paper, but um, designs that are going to be in the new book. This is another one. It's a beautiful little birdhouse. Um, again, it's got lots of moss growing and stuff like that. Then I've got this girl, and this was one that is actually, you'll see it when you're watching the video uh, later this week. She was one that I worked through in the sketching process of trying to sort of learn how to draw. And so I ended up turning her into one of the coloring pages. And I'm really happy with how this one turned out. And lucky last early sneak preview is a cute squirrel. <laughs> because if you've uh, watched more of my behind the scenes stuff, you'll know that when I last went to America, I maybe had a little obsession with the squirrels because we don't get squirrels in Australia and I think they're adorable. So I have created this gorgeous little, sorry, I'm overplaying my own page. I think it's gorgeous because it's a squirrel. <laughs> um, but this page is actually already in our member vault. So if you're someone who is in our gold or teal membership, They've already got access to this. Um, If you're one of those people and you don't, let us know and we'll get you connected. But we do have a coloring book vault on our website that's just for members that has a few early pages. So this one's in there and we're going to be putting more pages over the next month or so that they can get some early access. And then, oh yes, so (laughs) Riley's just mentioned, when is the squirrel emote coming? we're going to do that. I think, um, so I'm actually heading to the U S again, uh, in a week, not long now for another big event. Um, it's an art exhibition. It's, it's more like a trade show, really. It's for a lot of the companies and that, that actually make art supplies, which means that I've got about 16 hours on the plane to do some stuff. So I'll be working on the coloring book during that time, but I am also going to make sure that we get some new emojis and pictures and stickers for our members, both in discord and also for here. So, um, there's already a squirrel emoji in YouTube, apparently, according to all the pictures, but we would love to have our own version. So I think that's definitely on the list because we only have about five emojis at the moment and they're awesome, but we need more and we need more Moscow as well. <laughs> the event, Hannah, is in New Orleans. Um, it's called Namta Creativation. So you do have to be, um, a creative professional or a company to be able to attend. It's the first time that we are going and I'm very excited because, um, for us, it's both, a networking opportunity to talk with a lot of brands that we work with day to day. Like I know Derwin's going to be there, for example. Um, and then it's also a chance for us with our products, like the color cube to kind of start to find out, like, how do we go about getting those into stores um, and look at some of the retail opportunities for us. So it's a little bit of a research. It's very much a work trip for us, but I'm definitely going to enjoy it because going to a trade show full of art supplies can't not be fun. <laughs> so these oh, boats are pretty close, Sarah. I oh, think really? We should um, have one last look at them All right, before let's have we a look. lock something. How in. do I? How do I? Here we go. Oh, they are pretty close. Did um, you want to put them back out again? So yeah, same, one yeah. Last so if time? you haven't given us a vote, or if you want to change a vote, I don't know if I can change their votes actually. <laughs> if you haven't given us a vote yet on which page we should color today, move them up. So my head's not in the way. Um, please vote because we do want to get started on this. I have a habit of not finishing pages in live streams because I talk too much and because I like to take my time with coloring. So <laughs> this one is currently our winner by a very small margin. Um, C is coming in second. If So let's just say right now, I'll tell you what, let's take these two out because these are the two highest. If you voted A or B and you want to take away that vote and pick one of these now, let's do that. So our people that voted A and B, can they change their votes, Shane? Does anyone know? Have a go, someone. <laughs> Not sure you can. Do we need to start a new poll? That just feels complicated. No, I think D's starting to jump okay. ahead a little bit. If you haven't voted, pick one of these two. Forget A and B right now. They weren't quite high enough and we'll see. But it does look like we are heading towards D. So be sure to eat the... How do I say that? Bayonets? Someone else told me this. I don't know if that's how I say it. Someone else told me in New Orleans, you've got to try these things. So I actually wrote it down. It's in our notes of like important things to do while we're there. I have no sightseeing planned. I don't even know what's in New Orleans, but I did have try this food. Everyone said, try this food. So we're going to find some down. It's like in my notes. (laughs) 
Okay. We can't change our votes, but that's okay. I do think... D is the winner. D is very much the winner. They're French donuts. Oh, well, then beignet. Ah, that makes more sense than beignet. Beignet. Everyone's given me very slightly different ways to say it. Beignet. 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 We're going with that. All right. I am excited to try a beignet because I haven't had one, but a French donut sounds exactly like the kind of thing that I would enjoy. So I love the snails on D. Where is that? Oh, here. That one. Oh, yeah, he's kind of cute. All right. So he's, he's an overgrown snail, kind of like the overgrown style that I'm doing in my new book. It's funny when um, now that I'm designing a coloring book, I'm looking a lot closer at everyone else's because I'm like, I don't want to copy them. And it's really funny because I'm seeing repeating patterns in different artists end up eventually doing the same things. It's almost inevitable. Like everybody's done butterflies at some point, every, like flowers. I mean, I, I found in, um, <clears throat> in that earlier picture that I showed you of the woman, <clears throat> sorry, I should probably have some water. I decided I saw these fuchsias and I saw a photo of them and I was like, these are such good flowers. I can't believe I haven't seen these in a coloring page before. They're such a perfect flower for a coloring page because they look like little um, angels or fairies with their little like ballerinas even like with their skirts. <laughs> and so I have a few other pages with these. And as soon as I like put the time into drawing them and did them, and then later on I opened up one of Hannah Carlson's books and they were everywhere in her books. And I was like, how have I not seen these before? <laughs> um, it's just inevitable that that every there's nothing new under the sun, as they say. Um, all right, we are down to these two. No, we decided it's this, right? This is it. This is our page. Okay, page decided. Now I was going to get you to help me choose a color palette. The tricky thing with this is that there's a lot of pictures. So the question is, are we going different color palettes for each, or are we going to try and stick with the consistent palette across all of them? Because we can kind of go either way. Um, I did grab just a stack of these, All right? These are some of my, my favorite sort of sets in a quick glance that I found. I am not even putting them on the screen. Look at that. There we go. So maybe we just pick one to start with. I've got way too many to do a poll. <laughs> maybe I just have to randomly pick one and then randomly pick a picture and then just see where we end up. Make it a bit of a... I, I grabbed I grabbed a lot. I didn't just grab four. In fact, I actually have more than even that. So and now I can't cover up the numbers. So these are the color palettes that I chose as just going through the book and went, oh, these are all a bit of fun. Just just a couple. <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> this is my problem is I end up choosing way too many and can't pick. We also need to work out what um, picture we want to start with. I guess I probably shouldn't overthink this too much. I should just make... Oh, there's two snails in here. I should just um, pick one to start with because we're probably going to try and get through a few of these anyway. You know, I'm going to start with a simple butterfly. Um, we've got a couple of people that have said 391. Or is that the same? No, there's multiple different people. All right, well, where's that? Uh, this one. Oh, that's actually really pretty. Yeah, let's start with that. Do we want that for the snail or do we want that for something else? Not the snail, the um, butterfly. There's some funny stories happening in the chat. <laughs> okay, so this palette has a lot of different colors. I wonder if we could use this for a few pictures, actually. I'm tempted to kind of do a couple of pictures in this and maybe we just pick one other palette to sort of go with that's kind of different to this one. That one's actually quite different um, because then we can kind of not have to keep pick, pick colors over and over and over. We can kind of stick with just the couple. And so if we did half the pictures in this and half the pictures with this, I think that could actually be really pretty. Maybe this one as well. Just trying to think something that's kind of different to that, but that will still look good on the same page. All right. I think we're going to use these three palettes throughout this spread. So the first thing that I want to do is actually just find the right pencils. So we're going to start with this. Um, so I find it easier to grab the back because then I can just match them up against my pencils. I'll show you what I mean. I can just run it along here 
Now the pencil barrel isn't usually going to be perfect, but at least gives me a good starting point. So I, that one looked pretty good. Get a nice solid swatch. It's a bit, the rose tan's a bit darker. So I wonder if I can find one that's a bit more muted. They don't have to be perfect. I don't mind adjusting the palette a little bit. Oh, they actually go quite nicely together, those two colours. See, that's actually too brown. That's almost more toward... Uh, there you go. That's why they go well together. <laughs> it's like the next colour. <laughs> well, I think we're going to go with these two. Now, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, but this is what I'm going with. So this first one, let me write these on here for us. We've got Coral. I thought they had long, long, bigger numbers. 131. And this one is... Venetian red, 190. Should write the palette number down so we have it. It's 391. Okay, so these are our Faber Castell colors, the Polychromos. Write this down because otherwise later when my team are trying to put this on the blog or anything for us, we just can't match them up. <laughs> okay, so we've got two. We need our orange next. So we've got a couple oranges here that might work, but we need to see what they look like. So this one, these are very bright oranges. I wonder if we need to also check out, this is actually a bit of a brown almost, like a darker orange. So let's just do these over here. That looks way too bright in my opinion. I also don't know how accurately you're seeing these colors on the camera compared to what I'm seeing them. So, so that one, that last one's more of a brown than an orange but it might work. It's actually pretty close to the color. Um, in fact, I wonder if we blended just on top, that second one on top of that, that's closer to our color. So just seeing if there's any other options. It's getting pretty dark now. Oh, that's a pretty good, that's actually, a lot more similar to the dark version. So we have to make a choice. And what I'm thinking is we can always bring in a couple of these colors. I actually do like these two. They're actually more brown than orange, but I'd like to see how they look when I bring them together with all these other colors. So I'm going to put them both down. If you prefer the orange, I'll put that down as well because we can always use this to just subtly change the color because it's quite bright on its own. So I'll list all three and then we might find in some pictures it works better to do this one and in other pictures it works better to do one of the others. They're all kind of going to give us the same final look with the overall concept of the palette. So it doesn't have to be perfect. That's really the point here. Which one was which? That was the, that one. Sanguine, sanguine. 188. And this one is 186, terracotta. If you don't have these pencils, <laughs> please just bet with me. <laughs> um, all right. So, so far, we've got this is kind of representing these first three colors. So, it's an upside down. You can kind of see there, actually that first one does feel pretty good. The orange I think is too bright. I think these two are a better version, even something halfway between. Okay, the next color is Mimosa on here and it's kind of this yellow, but it's almost like a dirty yellow. I'm gonna see what happens if we, oh, actually I do have some dirty yellows over here. They might be too much, they might be too gray. So let's have a look. We've got our bright yellow. It is definitely too bright, but it might work in the palette. This one I feel like is a bit better. It's This actually has a touch of green in it, but I do think that that's actually a really nice color. That's getting too dark. But remember we can use, so that one's now too orange. We can use the darker color as like a secondary color with the yellow. Sometimes it's nice to get a couple of colors. Um, that way you can blend them and get a bit of shading happening. So I'm actually gonna put both of these down even though it isn't quite the right color. This one is actually 
um, it's almost got a touch more green to it, but it's very, very subtle. So I would rather lean into the yellow than try to move over to a green because the greens are completely different. So we could always add a touch of green to it, even these, these ones here, but see, they've lost the gray. So I think we're going to go with these two. So we have 185. That's Naples yellow. And this one is a yellow, sorry, light yellow ochre 183. I have totally lost track of the chat at this point, Shane. So <laughs> if anyone says anything important, feel free to step in. All right, we need to move to our greens and teals, which is only a couple here. Otherwise, I need to switch my pencils. Put these back so we don't get them mixed up. Look, this tray's a bit harder to get out. I'm just going to grab a handful. Grabbing any that just look kind of teal almost. It's not quite teal, it's more of an emerald. Okay, so these are my options. Let's go the lighter one first and I'm thinking this isn't quite blue enough but I think it's going to work for sea foam. It's a bit brighter. Oh, it is pretty bright. It's alright. We'll see how this looks. This one is Light Fallow Green, 162. Oh, there's a, that's a crazy word to spell. What's with HTH? <laughs> and then for an emerald colour, this one looks like it's going to be pretty close. And it goes really well with that lighter colour. So this is a bit more green, but I'm tempted to just... It's almost more that. I kind of want to include both, I think, because this one's a bit more accurate, but this one, I think, looks nice with that. Because I like the touch of blue. I just like teal. Any excuse to put teal in, let's be honest. <laughs> All right. So these two colours we have are chrome oxide green fire. That's a lot of, a lot of words. Um, 276. <laughs> Chrome oxide, whoops, green, fiery. Couldn't have picked a shorter name. And then this one is Hooker's Green. To be clear, we are talking about a hooker table. <laughs> Billiards. Billiards Green is what they should really call it. <laughs> okay, so there's a bit of a change. But, and I've done this annoyingly upside down, haven't I? But you can see how this selection of colours, despite changing a few colours, has the right vibe for this palette. And that's really what we go for. We don't need them to be exact or like perfect Pantone references. We just need them to have enough of the same feel as this picture. And I think we actually did a pretty good job there. The colours here are a little bit brighter. Um, but then if we sort of don't press as hard, that will also tone them down a bit. We might be able to add a little bit of grey, but I don't know. I kind of like the brightness, actually. Um, I always prefer bright colours, but a few of them have still got a bit of a muted look to them. So really, really happy with that. Um, curious to see if anyone else tried to follow along or if anyone had some better options, but we are going to work with this. So let's... Now I've got them all out of order. I don't know why I'm trying to put them back in order because they're not going to stay in order anyway. <laughs> but it just means that when I'm grabbing them, there we go. That's a bit better. Okay. I'm just going to blue tack this to the table. It's my trick to get things not to move around. <laughs> Did I see someone mention a birthday? Or am I imagining things? Yes. 
Whose birthday is it? I'll have to have a look. <laughs> the only time this isn't good doing blue tack on the back is um, actually Shane can I have a top it's camera. It's Kay's birthday. Happy birthday, Kay! <laughs> Happy birthday! All right, I do this so that the page stays in the same spot. This is not something you need to do. This is something that I do for the benefit of the camera. <laughs> it means that as I'm coloring, I don't end up off the screen. And it means that um, if we ever want to like speed up the footage later, it's not like, oh, why am I sticking this down? I'm coloring the book. <laughs> it's not going like this when we speed it up time lapse. So that's why we do this. But I do need to actually, Blue tacking your book down is a little more complicated. It takes a lot more blue tack. Alan has asked you where the colour palette cards are from. Well, <laughs> this is where the colour palette cards are from. They are from the Colour Cube, um, which Shane will pop a link in the description for you. This is something I've made. Um, so it's to help you get lots of ideas. There's 250 cards in a box and there are two boxes. A lot of the other people watching have already got one of these. Um, it's something that can help you choose colors that work well together. So this is actually a good page because it happens to be where the stitch is. So it's going to stay open a lot easier. But I still am going to blue tack it down, but I'm going to blue tack on the whole cover. Who's spamming all the emojis? I love it. <laughs> birthday Amy happy birthday Amy I hope it's Amy oh it's on the 9th there you go all right nice big chunks of blue tack to hold our book in the center cool we've got I'm gonna move the pencils over this side because otherwise I'm not going to be able to keep them neat I was just looking to see if Moscow was in his bed, but I think he's disappeared, so he might not be on this stream. Maybe Natalie took him in the other room. Natalie probably stole him. She loves Moscow. There's a, there is a poster on her wall that is an award for being the best cat sitter. <laughs> okay, so where are we starting? Oh, I'm so bad at this. We're half an hour in and I haven't even put a single pencil mark on the page yet. But this is, this is what we do, isn't it? This is the way to craft. Is It takes forever to actually do anything. All right, we're going to jump in because if we don't, we're never going to get there. I like to start with whatever I think is going to be the easiest thing to start with. And in this case, if we're doing the butterfly, I would say it's the leaves. I am just growing my sharpener. Um, this is not the sharpener that I use for most of my other pencils, by the way. This one, when you do a video comparing every sharpener ever, you end up with a lot of sharpeners. This one, in my opinion, does too sharp of a point for most brands, but for the polychromos or for like firm pencils, it's really good. It's the Uni Mitsubishi sharpener. So it's like Posca brand, essentially. Mitsubishi, Uni, no, they're not, po they're connected. Either way, it's Japanese and it's very expensive. So I probably actually wouldn't recommend it as my go-to, but it is a very nice sharpener. <laughs> I wouldn't put it in the affordable category of sharpeners, but because I already had it, I love using it on the polychromos. I don't use it on anything else. You know what? I've never owned an electric sharpener. It's kind of embarrassing, really, for given how much I like pencils. Let me know if you have a really good recommendation for an electric sharpener, because I think it's about time that I buy one. Because <laughs> this is just, I do this every, every time. The one I normally use is similar. It's the Dahl, Dahl or Dali 133. Um, it's also recommended in my video of every pencil sharpener. Well, it wasn't, it was about 20 pencil sharpeners. It wasn't every, there's actually a whole lot more. <laughs> I wasn't gonna buy them all. <laughs> um, but there are a few that I've kept from that video. I haven't kept all of them. A couple of them I gave away or gave to the kids. <laughs> Electric sharpeners are overrated. Fair enough. My worry is always that, like, are they as gentle on the pencils as these? And will they just eat up your pencils? So Sandra's saying they eat up your pencils. There you go. <laughs> okay, so my pencils are sharp. I'm going to grab my greens. 
And what I like to do, even with something as small as these flowers, is I like to use a light and a dark of a color. So when I am blending, there's, there's no right or wrong way in which color to put first or last. Um, the last color probably matters more than the first if you're using really waxy pencils. These pencils aren't waxy, they are oil-based. So let me just show you quickly on here, the blending method that I use for all of my drawing, and it'll be much smaller scale when I'm doing a leaf. So I wanna show you here first. And I have a few videos on this on how to draw gradients and how to blend colored pencils, no matter the brand you're using. You wanna kind of work if we assume this is one color and this is the other, and we're gonna try and blend them in the middle. One of the biggest mistakes people make is that they'll color here and they'll stop, and then they'll color here and then they stop, and then they're trying to blend them together from there, right? And no matter how much I sort of work this, if you have Prisma colors, you can kind of get it to do this because they're waxy and you can move the wax afterwards. It's a bit like butter. You can't do it with other pencils. It, it works a little bit. So people then don't try and change their technique because it looks like it kind of works, but this is not the way to blend. The way to blend properly is actually to layer. So I'll show you each of these separately and then we'll put them together. So what you wanna do is whichever side you start with doesn't really matter. That's really a preference thing, whether you start with light or start with the dark, but you do wanna work in a couple of lighter layers rather than one heavy layer, if you can. But the goal is to actually start with a heavy spot at one side and then slowly lighten it as you go across so that it eventually basically disappears. So practicing doing this is probably the best, the single best thing that you can do to improve your coloring is practicing doing this with all your different pencils. Go hard and then go to light. You don't have to do it in one, one layer like I just did. You could do light first and then come back and then add more and then add more. But to learn to kind of taper off the color, to kind of blend it out to white like this, it's not really blending, it's layering, but, and then doing the same, going the other direction to just slowly lighten your touch is actually probably the single best thing you can do to learn how to color well. Because not only does this give you more variance in one color, but then when we overlap them, they will blend together. And that's how we create all different colors. That's how we create those beautiful gradients. So let me show you this exact same thing, but I'm gonna do it here and we're gonna overlap them this time. So I always start lighter if I'm blending together because you can always add another layer. And I've actually taken this three quarters of the way across. And we'll grab our dark color and we'll go back the other way and see now we're overlapping, but we're still pressing really light. And again, this one is getting lighter and lighter. So what's actually happened is I've taken these two and put them on top of each other. And then once you've got your base, you can basically just go back and forth with the colors on light layers. You can press as hard as you want at this point. That really is just feeling through it. But the, the sooner you press hard, the quicker you're kind of locking in the color. So if you're not confident in doing this yet, I would say do more light layers until you build up your confidence. And then over time, you'll be able to do it in two layers because you'll be able to sort of get a feel for how much color actually goes down. I often find too that with blending, you end up using a bit more of the lighter color because the darker color will change the whole picture really quickly. Whereas the lighter color, you can often bring a lot more in and it won't make as big of an impact. So I'm actually pressing quite hard now with this because I feel like I'm sort of getting close to the end. And see how that compared to that is dramatically different. So this now goes from light to dark. It's not completely seamless because I've sort of done it quite quickly. And again, these are the pencils that everyone says can't blend. Everyone says that polychromos can't do this, but they can. It's just about layering instead of trying to force the colors together. Even a lot of people when they're using Prisma colors will do this and then their method of actually blending them is to grab the white pencil and just shove over the top to blend the colors together. The biggest problem with doing that is that you actually completely change the color. You make them all pastel by adding the white. You can get a blending pencil that will help with this, but essentially, if you can learn to do it without those extra handicaps first, you're gonna get a much better result. And then things like the blending pencil will only improve what you've already done. So this is the one thing that I say you should practice. Um, I have two videos on my channel that can actually help you with this. One is how to blend colored pencils. It's quite an old video now. It is a little bit long, but I do this whole process very slowly with Prisma colors. And then I also show you with the polychromos. And the second video is actually um, I did basically 20, 20 different gradients with 
Prismacolor. And it was me just doing this over a whole page. And it can be a really good one if you copy along to actually practice blending different types of colors together. And it also shows you how to pick colors that work well together in those kind of gradients. So those kind of skills, then when you transfer to your actual coloring will bring the coloring to life in a whole different way. So let's get practical with this. First, I think Shane has something to say. Can you just recap um, what color palette you used and what colors? Okay, so this is the color palette. Here. Is this what we're talking about? Sorry, this here for reference is the Faber-Castell Polychromos and this is my color palette here. I wonder if I can just, let me get a little um, paper clip or a clip to attach it on so that we can keep this on screen. There we go. So I'll try to keep this here, but knowing my hand, it's going to end up everywhere. <laughs> so um, if anyone wants it back on screen at any point, let me know and we'll just do that as we go. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend trying that little method there. That one thing I think is probably the most underestimated skill in coloring is learning to blend two colors together. I have to give a little shout out at the moment to, um, Holly from our team. who has been sharing her first ever coloring in our discord and she has been using polychromos and she has learned this intuitively. I didn't show her how to do it. And because of that, her coloring is amazing. The stuff that she's done on her first ever coloring page looks like something that a lot of us would do after about six months. And it's because she's got this intuitive knack for this particular step of blending the two, two colors together really, really well. So if you get this right, it will change everything else. Um, so let's have a go at this one. Um, so to show you this same thing, I'm basically, there's two approaches you can take and I'll probably mix it up as we do different pages. You can start, and we'll do this for these, you can start by just doing a very light layer of your lighter color. And then we can come back with the darker after. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I am doing this quite quickly because I'm aware that I'm eating up our time. So feel free to go a bit slower. So then for the um, shading, there's no sort of rules of where to shade. If you've got something this small, it's up to you if you wanna sort of be creative with it. I might show you some other specific shadows afterwards. Um, but for this, I kind of just wanna make sure that if I'm shading on the side of the leaf, I do it on the same side for all of them to assume the light's coming from a particular way. If the light's coming straight from the top, then we could shade around the edges. For this case, and probably for most of this page, just for consistency, I'm gonna pretend that my light source is up here. So here we go, this is our, this is our sun. <laughs> so this is our sun casting down on here. So that means my shadows are gonna go on the opposite side of that. So we're gonna put just a dark thing and as much as it's very, very small and hard to tell, I'm basically doing a very mini, mini version of this where the edge furthest away is the harshest. And then I'm trying to go a little bit softer as I go in. Now, remember that I've only done a light layer of the light color. I'm actually, because these are such small pictures and I'm pretty confident with what I want here, I'm going pretty heavy with this color. And then I'll go again heavier with this one. I guess the thing with going heavier, once you go heavier, it actually burnishes the page. And what I mean by that is that it flattens the paper out. And so you can't really add more color if you press too hard. So you want to try and keep your pencil as light as possible until you're ready to add that final color. And see, just in those little leaves already, just by using the two colors rather than one, it's pretty subtle and it's probably even more subtle to look at on the camera as opposed to what I can see, but it just adds a little bit of dimension to it. They're not flat one color pictures. They've just got a touch of color. And all that was, was two pencils and a little bit of blending. The picture is blurry. Shane, can we, shouldn't be blurry. Let me see, give me a second. We're gonna be a bit shaky for a section, for a second. Let's see if, no, that's the zoom. It shouldn't be blurry, but let me try and make it better for you. Is that better or worse? There you go, Shane's got us a second angle because Shane is the camera master. So <laughs> here we go, a slightly closer look on the side though, but that's okay. And then you can have a bit of a closer look. Yeah, someone else has pointed out too, if you have a touch screen, you can actually zoom in on YouTube. I don't love this because then you can also zoom in on my face and everything, but that's okay. You can zoom in on the artwork. <laughs> so hopefully that helps. We might keep this angle while we do the next um, 
the next part. So, oh, there's part of me that's tempted to do all the flowers, but I kind of want to finish one thing at a time. So for our butterfly, we want to stick with this color palette. I think going for the pink and maybe the yellow could be a really nice balance. And then we'll use the other colors for shading. So let's go the pink. Looking at this, it's a coral. I've got the coral and I reckon the Venetian red would be a really nice complement for that. So we'll use that as the shadow of that one. Sometimes instead of using like a really dark blue or brown for shadows, I actually really like just using a darker version of the color. It depends on the final result you're going for. If you're going for something more realistic, using browns or blues are a really good way to add shadows, especially if you do the opposite one of the color because then it like, I have a whole video about shadows. Maybe that's a better option rather than me trying to summarize it here about how to add different kinds of shadows and how to do that in more detail. Now, I don't really have a particular goal in mind here. So I'm just going to pick some spots. So if you're copying me, please feel free to just disagree and do something else because I'm just winging this. <laughs> so I do want to make sure that it matches on each side. So we're going to do a lighter color here. Again, I'm not pressing completely hard yet. And if I go out of lines, it's, I'm sorry, it's because I'm trying not to take too long. And I want to do the darker actually a little bit on this rim because I feel like that will help it to look like, well, actually, I don't know why I did that because I was thinking this one underneath is actually sitting on top, but I'm not sure that it is. It might be part of the same wing. That's okay. It's done now. And then because we've got our, our lighting this way, it would actually be good to add more of the dark one on this side and not on this side. So this one I might leave just at that with that tiny bit of the dark on that one edge. Whereas this one, I might darken more of it. This is just a personal choice. You might choose to have everything more symmetrical and have the light coming from above. But if you are wanting a light to come from one side, then by making most things darker on the other side, it'll look like it's in the shadow. So I've got that one quite darker, quite a bit darker. And we'll come back to fill in the gaps. I actually worry too much if I go a little bit out of the lines because they do get colored by, they do get covered by other colors. So it doesn't bother me too much. Um, now there's actually not a whole lot of difference. Now that I've blended those colors, you can hardly see the shading <laughs> because I think the colors are so similar. So I'll just come back with the darker one again. But what I might do when we finish this picture, whoops, is bring in a darker shadow, like I was saying, even, well, no, I'll do it now. I'm gonna grab, um, what's a really dark? I'm just trying to think, would this palette, it, it's, it's a very warm palette. So, and this is me just brainstorming through my own head. I think adding like a blue as a shading color might be a bit too intense for this. However, you can see in the photo, this is where I like to look at some of their shadows in the photo. There is actually almost a bit of a blue hint to some of this because it's coming from the environment. We could potentially even use a really dark green. But the reason is if we use a blue on an orange, we're going, let me show you, we're going to get, almost, it'll almost be like we've added black, except that we've not added black. Um, it'll create more of a natural gray. So let me grab a, navy is this dark enough that's not that dark well it is dark but i feel like we can go a bit darker so this one this is in debt how do i say that indian Thrain blue <laughs> this is a really dark blue and so instead of adding a black or a gray which you can also do if we add a very slight version of this now i haven't decided yet if i actually think this is going to work i'm kind of experimenting see how on the brown it actually kind of goes gray anyway. That's because they're, they're opposite ends of the color wheel. So they sort of make a gray. It's way more noticeable if you do this with paints rather than with pencils. But if you are very careful in layering them, it can make a very interesting shadow. On the pink, it's a bit more just obvious that it's that color. So I'm not sure if that's too intense for the shading. Otherwise, I like to grab just like a middle gray and try that. But see how the gray instantly makes the whole thing very, very gray. <laughs> Let me just bring back. This is what I do if I'm unsure about something because I just grab a scrap piece of paper and just test little sections like this. 
See, the gray is very gray. And it would be the same if we added the black. The blue's pretty strong though. But this one, this is dark indigo. Maybe this is better. Thank you for the coffee, Natalie. The dark indigo might be better because it's not quite black. It's kind of like it's got a little bit of blue to it, but it'll be a little bit softer. I feel like I'm just talking gibberish at this point. I'm really just trying to um, puzzle this out in my own head. Okay. If we want a heavier shadow, I feel like this is the option to go for. It's a dark indigo. And if we use it lightly, we'll just add a slight shadow. If we use it heavily, then we get basically dark indigo. So I'm going to add this to our color palette just for the purpose of helping make our shadow, give our shadows a bit more oomph because the pictures are so small that if we don't use a darker color, you just won't see the shading, which again is a preference. You might actually just like it like that. But I kind of want to. I, I like having strong shadows. I find it more interesting. Just going to sharpen this. And while I do that, I'm going to have a look to see who else is showing. It's muddy grey with the browner colour. Yeah, I agree. All right. So this we're going to be really subtle with because it will overpower the image very, very quickly. <laughs> so again, if you're not feeling brave, just skip this step basically. But I'm just doing a very, very light layer to try and make those shadows a bit stronger. And I'm even going to do this on the edge of those leaves, just where I want it to be a little bit darker. Just makes the shadow a little bit more obvious. All right. Since we've got this as our middle color, I think it'd be cool to connect this to the darker color here. But again, this isn't actually that dark. I reckon I need to get a darker version of this. Oh, that's very purple. What else have we got? All right. So if I'm looking at my Venetian red, I'm thinking this is, it's a bit more blue, but Actually, I really like how that goes with that. So if I'm wanting a darker color, we're going to add this, which is 263. This is my trap. I just keep adding colors. <laughs> but this is the point of the color palette is to give you a starting point, not to create a limitation. And this is still fitting with the color palette. It's a darker version of, we're trying to make it a darker version of our Venetian red, really. It's probably not actually a very accurate dark version of this, but I like it. So <laughs> good night, Nicole. Yeah, it's very late. You're in the Holland. So it is getting quite late there. All right. So let's add this darker one around here, but I'm only going to do this light because I actually want to try and stick with this color. I just wanted to darken it a little bit. I'm already not sure if I like this butterfly, how I've approached this, but you don't have to love everything you do. Sometimes it's more about experimenting and just enjoying the discovery process. Okay, so see that actually, by adding a touch of this underneath and then putting this color on top, it's just made this color a little bit darker. So there's a little bit more difference between the two of them. And I think I do like how that's turned out. Um, then we're going to, what am I gonna do? I actually think it'd be cool to do a bit of a, almost like it looks like a gradient. So it starts here and then it slowly moves into the warm yellow at the bottom. So I'm going to start at the bottom and get our yellow. And then we're going to work out the colors in between because we're going to have to mix the colors to get the colors in between. And I probably should speed this up a little bit just because otherwise I'm not going to get through it all. So I'm going to do a light yellow here as well only light and the same here very very light because we want to blend the color through in fact yes no, that's fine and then we'll do a bit of an orange on this one very lightly do we need the side camera you've already got the side camera back oh look at that so the orange starting to go down as well And 
and then it's kind of that pinky color so we'll bring the pinky color back through here I'm just doing this light and then we'll come back and work out if there's any extra shading we want to do but see because I'm working in light layers now I've kind of created a gradient between these two colors by just sort of um, adding more of one at one end and less at the other So let's come back with some shading. So this is our slightly darker. No, this was this is the really darker one that we found at the end. Our 263. I'm gonna do this around this, just the top ones, not the bottom. It'll be too dark for the yellow. I've totally thrown my angle out the window at this point. <laughs> I've changed my mind. I'm doing it from above. The top is higher than the bit underneath, so. Breaking my own rules, isn't that naughty? All right, but we will do it a bit darker on this side, I think, to create that sense of a shadow. It's just, it feels like it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not convinced I made the right call. We're gonna use the brown on this orange to just adjust the color a bit. And then we're gonna use our dusty, uh, light yellow ochre, this is a dusty yellow. If you could create your own coloured pencil, what would you name it? Oh. It'd just be a set of like 48 teal colours, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't even have... To, well, that's not true. I use teal first. <laughs> Busted. Okay. I'm, I'm liking this, but I'm also like, I don't know where I'm taking this. <laughs> Do you need both colour cubes? And if um, only one volume is fine, which one's better? Ooh. Now, better is obviously subjective. You don't need both. <laughs> most, honestly, most people that buy them end up buying both, but you absolutely don't need to buy both. It is definitely a preference. Um, I would say, personally, I really like volume two. That's the one that I'm using today is volume two. Just because... Um, some of the collections in there. So the first one was created first as a standalone product, the color catalog, volume one. And then we had a lot of people saying, oh, can you make volume two? So with volume two, I tried to look at what I felt was missing from volume one. And there, not that it was missing, it still works without it. But volume one is more seasons. Um, there is actually an exact list on the website of what is in each one. So volume one is more different seasons, summer, autumn, winter, spring. It's got a Christmas set. It's got, um, oh, I don't even remember what else. And then volume two has um, like oceans. It has animals. It has sunsets. And I find that the oceans and the sunsets in particular are two that I go to all the time. So they're the ones that I probably like the most. Um, I'm sorry, Christina, I didn't answer the question of what I would name a set of pencils. I don't know. I've got a name. Zoomies. Zoomies. Uh, okay, context for that. Moscow was running laps at the house earlier and Shane discovered that that was called Zoomies. <laughs> so Zoomies, it sounds like a kid's brand. All right, I need to talk about what I just did because <laughs> there's I, I, I actually really like how this has turned out now, but I didn't talk you through the last part. I didn't change much from the gradient that I was already doing. And I haven't even done darker shading on this side. I said I would. I'm going to come back and just do that a bit. But then what I did at the bottom was just picked the darker variation that I've got of each color. And I've done that along the trim. So the trim is essentially the same color palette. So it's kind of one piece. I haven't done like a full rainbow across every piece of the wings. But I've kind of gone light to dark. And again here, so the outside is just a darker edge. And so the darker edge, I just blended between the dark colors I had. To clarify, that is the dark colors being the light ochre yellow here. And the, I think it was sanguine that I basically used there, or it might have been the Venetian red. I'm not entirely sure. And then this kaput mortuum <laughs> is the one that um, I used on the last color. I'm a bit concerned about what that translates as. Kaput Motuum, that sounds like, well, kaput is like dead, right? It's gone kaput. <laughs> Motuum, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this means like dead body, but I might be wrong. Can someone translate that? Go look it up in Latin. But... Oh, it's kaput Motuum Violet. Sorry. 
Sorry. Bye. <laughs> Somebody just looked it up. It's Latin. But what does it mean? All right. So there's some little bits that I haven't done in here. I might just do the darker colors in them because I think that really works with the outside and it keeps it without adding too many more colors to this little butterfly. Keeps it fairly simple. Just bring in for some of these little extra details. I'm actually pretty happy with how it's turned out. The center, um, the question is, do we do the center lighter or darker? Because what I'll do is pick, pick a color I've already got here to fill the middle. I just, I'm not sure which way we're going to go. If we're going to go for a lighter middle or a darker middle, I'm worthless remains. Someone's translated it. <laughs> worthless remains. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a lovely name for a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Why are so many art color artists doing a live stream with this book? Um, I didn't know they were, but I guess because it's new. It's new and it's good size because, I mean, we're an hour into this stream and this is all I've done. <laughs> it wouldn't have been a good idea to um, pick a big page of a big coloring book. But look, we will do some of that kind of stuff in the future. But if you watch any of my past live streams, I have a habit of like starting them and then never, ever, ever coming back to finish the page. So You should do one of those like 24 hour straight streams and you get through at least six of them. <laughs> Shame's been on me. All right. What I've decided is I've gone for the darker color, but even darker again. I was thinking if this is dark, I don't know if that's the right choice. You might do opposite, but... I have done darker here because I felt like that would bring more the, the the wings feel like they're brighting it at all. So um here we go. And then what I might do is grab our dark indigo because I have made some of these ones on this side a bit darker. I'm gonna add a bit of a shadow just on this side of our butterfly. Right, I think our butterfly, oh, hang on, we've missed some little spots. I think my butterfly's done. Did anyone else end up colouring this with me? I'm curious. Looks like a moth. You're right, it is a moth. <laughs> yes, you're right, I've been calling it a butterfly this whole time, but the angle of the wings, it's very much a moth. By the way, if you see my name in the chat right now, I, I do not have a fifth hand or do... I don't have a third hand either. Um, it's Shane stepping in as me, <laughs> just so that you know. Uh, just in case anyone was curious as to how I was multitasking, this isn't pre-recorded. <laughs> I mean, I think it's pretty clear it's not pre-recorded. I would have been a lot more, um, it would have been better spoken and better organised if it was pre-recorded. <laughs> probably also less interactive. <laughs> probably also less interactive, yes. Um, so the question is, do we want a little background on the moth or are we just going to just leave it? To that. Oh, we move on, maybe. I think we're going to move on. Okay, so I want to teach you some different techniques on this page because it's cool to do so. Um, I want to pick another one. I know. Why don't we do the hot air balloon and I'll teach. Oh, actually, one of the most. I want to show you how to make something glow. <laughs> this is where I'm getting at. And the hot air balloon could be cool for glowing or, oh, this little bottle might be tricky to, we could pretend that this is glowing inside. Um, I'm just trying to pick which picture would be better to glow. What do we think? It's glowing or glass. I, there's some glass items here that we could work on. Um, I think we're going to do the bottle as a glowing bottle. So I'm not going to entirely teach you how to color glass. Oh, my fingers are dirty. Um, how to color glass at this point. We're going to work on how to make it glow. So the first thing I think I need is actually to define a bit of a background. Um, so I might just draw <clears throat> with a gray lid. Very light background. Um, what I might do 
We could do it as a circle or we could do it as a bit more of a random shape. Let's just try a circle. Let's see if I can like a big, big issue without crossing over everything else. It's gonna have to hang out the circle. Or does the circle have to be too big? And what I might do is grab my own pen. There we go. So my circle, and I'm just going to grab a fine liner to actually draw it so that it looks like part of the page. I didn't prepare a fine liner earlier. I probably should have. Because now I can't find one. That was my whole desk. <laughs> that could have ended badly. All right, here is my stash of black pens and fine liners. I just need to find one that isn't going to bleed because that's happened before. Although part of the problem is just it's probably not going to have time to dry. This one is a little bit too thick. I don't. I want it to match the artwork. So that is 0.5. <laughs> That's a point one. That's tiny. That's too tiny. Is there like a point three? We've got microns. What's this? Actually, that's pretty good. That one is a number three micron. Okay, we're going with that. Okay. <laughs> Watch me freehand this circle. I did draw a sketch. Pressure is on. There we go. Nailed it. <laughs> and somewhere here I have my eraser. Just get rid of those lines. There we go. A special edition book that has a circle. <laughs> Joanna, thank you for your lovely comment. And I'm really sorry to hear about your mum being there, obviously. Um, yeah. I'm not seeing a lot of the comments, but I saw that one. Um, okay, so what I want to do here is a bit of a glowing effect. Now, if I'm going to stick with the colours that we've got here... Oh, see, I feel like this picture, after we spent so long trying to find colours, I feel like this would be a better colour palette for this. So I'm going to very, very quickly just try and find a couple of these colours. Maybe I'm going to be less exact because I kind of just want to get on with this. So I know that we already have this good blue that I think goes really well with the dark blue here. So we're going to use that. I'm just going to write the number because taken too long I'll come back and fill in the other information after the stream and we can put it in the comments if you want this blue feels pretty good to me it's probably not exact it's but it, it I, I think it's going to work for what I'm wanting to do so that is number 246 that's an old one is there another one of them I have a couple of pencils that are old that aren't supposed to there it is it's the same one um that aren't supposed to be in here they're supposed to be somewhere else so put that away um, wasn't your first pencils like Five different polychromos or something? Yeah, the first pencils I ever owned, which wasn't even that long ago, um, was like 20 polychromos that I picked out individually. And I also picked out gold and silver that I've never used. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Oh, I think that... So this isn't exact, right? This is a lot brighter, but it's just the right feel for this picture. So I'm not even going to try and swatch a bunch. I'm just going to use that because I like it. But I don't even think I'm going to use that in this particular one. I'm thinking the glowing, I want to do more. Oh, actually, no, I do. I want to show you something even cooler. Okay. Just making it up as I'm going along. That's how we roll. Okay. So I want another darker. Is there a darker version of that? There's no script today. No script today. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is actually going to bring in, this is probably a bit too bright. But I'm going to bring in a purple because if you mix this blue and this magenta, you're going to get a purpley colour. And I feel like I want to try and put them both in the background just to make this ultra complicated unnecessarily, <laughs> as I do. 
I don't know if this is the right purple, though. I just want to find... Jennifer's um, asked if you ever erase. Uh, not colours. Colours I don't. This is kind of... It's raspberry, but it's a dark, dark colour. So I think this one's actually pretty good for that. That's a burnt carmine. I'm realising a lot of these cards too, like the raspberry on the colour catalogue is obviously a lot brighter because screens are just different to print. So a raspberry pencil would probably end up being a lot lighter than this. Cajun Hawk works. has commented and said, I love Ooh. how the ideas just hit you. <laughs> they don't stop. That's my problem. <laughs> okay. So we are doing this light colour, even though it's not in my palette because it's a lighter version of this and I need some light and dark if we're going to do a uh, glow. I'm definitely overcomplicating this glow. I should really just stick to like two colours. <laughs> Instead, I've gone for like a blend of a few. Um, I do need a lighter blue. I've got to decide, am I going for a more... That's quite a different blue, but it's kind of closer to the others. Oh, that's better. What's this one? This is cobalt blue greenish. It's 144. I'll do it up here. But then if I really want to make the glow look good, I need like a quite a light colour to balance it out. Maybe this? Yeah, that one. Okay. So 152. Time to make the glow happen because, I mean, this is like, it's not the entire colour palette. It's, there's, I don't know if I'm going to use the pepper or not. I just put it there as a thought. Um, it's not the entire colour palette, but it does represent a lot of it. I also did have the black on here. I can't even see the black in my pencils. It's missing because I've got two different sets mixed up here. <laughs> Let me just grab. I've got to stop pressing this desk. It's not stuck. This is my original set of polychromos and I can see two blacks in here. They've been mixed up and I can tell the difference because <laughs> I don't know if you can see this on the camera. Oh, that's not a great spot. Um, the difference between my two sets, which is helpful to have a difference, is actually in the colour name. So the ones that I bought individually quite a few years ago, because they're maybe because they're open stock or maybe that used to be on all of them. I don't know. But they have the 9201 at the start, whereas the new ones, they've simplified the font, thankfully, because it's already hard to read with the gold. And um, they've taken out that first bit, so the numbers are shorter. Otherwise, they're identical. Like, they're the same pencils. Um, and that says made in Germany, that says Germany. It just shows brands do change over time. Oh, and this one has the barcode on it because it's open stock, whereas this one was bought in the big kit, so it doesn't have the barcode. So that's a handy little uh, way that I keep them separate. Let me just sharpen these. And then we'll get into our glow effect. I do believe... Not that long ago, we posted a short video with a robot where I did a glow effect. It's like a very mini tutorial, um, but it's a similar thing to what I'm going to be doing today. All right. So again, you can start with light or dark. The thing with glowing is that you want to make sure you protect the white in the middle because if it's going to really glow, the lightest colour is really important to get right. So I'm going to leave the middle of this for now. I'm just going to work on the background. And what I'm going to do is use the lightest colour, very, very lightly, to kind of frame around the object. The lighter, the better here. And it's very hard to tell, but when I am colouring, especially when I'm colouring this small, I'm actually not colouring like this. I'm actually colouring like this, but it's so grouped together. See how it ends up. I don't know how well you can see that. It's actually made up a lot of circles, but it means you don't end up with harsh edges. It's a good thing to practice. Um, I mean, if you're coloring light enough, it shouldn't matter if you're doing straight lines because you can still, it still kind of all blends together. But then if you are layering colors, you'll start to see lines show up. Whereas if you're always working in a very subtle circular motion, you're less likely to have those obvious lines in your work at the end. Just a little extra tip for you. So just working around here, doesn't mean doing big circles. It just means that like every line, just add a little bit of a, um, a flow to it. It's also more enjoyable, I find, 
when you get used to that because you're not changing your motion so quick. Your motion's a bit more subtle. Okay, so we've got a very, very light version of the color around this. Now, the bigger you make the light area, the more it's going to glow. This is still the first layer though, so we can adjust as we go. What I'm going to do now is mentally think of this now as my second color. Essentially, what we're doing here, let me show you on another piece of paper. You can use as many or as few colors as you need. Um, the more colors you use, the more gradual the glow will be. But also if you're working in a small area like this, more colors might actually not help because it'll just get cluttered. If you're doing a bigger space, then more colors is great. We're basically gonna create a gradient in the same way that we did our blending before. And the gradient is going to go from the darkest to the light, lightest to the darkest. However, that I did a terrible job of that first one. I didn't actually blend it out. <laughs> and then we're having our colors in between as well. So every color in between ends up being like light. You know what? If you hold your pencil back further, it's easier to go lighter. Let me just say that as well. So we're going light and then we're going dark and then we're going light again. I probably won't be holding my pencil further back for this picture because it's such a small picture that you do need your hand closer, but it does mean it's harder to do these light and dark, which is why the practice is really good. So these middle colors are kind of stronger in the middle and they're going to fade out because they have to fade out to a lighter color on this side and a darker color on this side. So every middle color looks a bit like that if it's on its own. But when you overlap the light on one side and the dark on the other, we're doing basically a gradient that goes from light. In fact, this is supposed to fade to white as well <laughs> to dark. And the dark is basically the background, whereas the light is the light, the, the glowing. So this is essentially what we're doing. There's the writing from the other side is coming through. That's funny. Um, we're essentially creating a gradient, but by doing the gradient around an object where the object is here, this will then look like the object is glowing. And you can just adjust by bringing the dark in more and the light out more to sort of change the look. I probably actually need a lighter color looking at this. It'll still look like it's glowing, but not as obviously. And that will change the size of the glow depending on how much you bring that dark in. And the middle colors are really just to help it be a smooth gradient between. How are we following along? I've lost my chat. Um, so this here is really what we're doing. Whenever you create a glowing effect, you're really going from light to dark and the light is the part that's glowing and you're going out to whatever the background scene is. It might not even be the same color. And that's the gradient that we're doing, but we're doing it outwards. Um, I'm not sure that the polychromos white, which is over here, works that effectively. It might, actually it does a little bit. It can help us just at that light end to actually make that light end a little bit lighter again. Um, probably add that towards the end. If you add white first, it isn't gonna do a whole lot. If you add it later, it will lighten the color just to create that super glow <laughs> at the start. So bringing that to our page, we're actually, I'm gonna put that one down. Um, again, the order of these doesn't really matter. It's more just try not to go too dark too quick because it's a lot easier to go darker. You basically, it, it's very hard to go lighter, especially with oil pencils. Wax pencils, you can go lighter easier. So like with Prismacolor, this is a much easier process. Because this is such a small picture, there's not gonna be a whole lot of room of overlap. But I think it also gives you a bit more grace in that it doesn't have to be as perfect because it's so small that it's gonna look good either way. Now, if you're wanting the glow, you have to kind of decide here, are you wanting the glow to be like the circle is making the glow central or are you wanting the glow to come out from the object a bit more obviously? Because if the glow was coming from the circle, you might want to shade around the whole circle to kind of create like a vignette border. But if we're wanting the glow to be more obviously from the object, it's not going to radiate perfectly around the circle. Um, so there'll be some parts of the circle like here and here that are further away from the object and it'll be darker. But the bottom isn't going to be as dark because it's actually quite close. 
that's really just a design choice on whether you want to go for more of a vignette or more of the glow. There's no right or wrong. It's all choice. Oop. Blue tacked my piece of paper to my coffee. Okay, so this is my darkest color now, but I don't want to be too heavy yet until I've kind of worked out exactly how big the glow is. I'll probably bring in a lot more dark overall because at the moment there's a lot of the lighter color. I just want to kind of decide as I'm going, feel through the process, make adjustments, rather than going in too heavy handed and then not being able to undo it if I don't like it. So already it's starting to look very a little bit like it's glowing even though we haven't got anywhere near finishing so you can start to see what's happening you know what I completely forgot to do is bring in the pink that I said I was gonna bring in <laughs> whoops I mean it's actually not too late so but instead of the the strong pink maybe I'll just do a purple because the purple is very similar to the blue because this is still quite light and this color they're right like I don't have the color wheel but I have this here because your purple colors are right next to your blues, they're analogous colors. You can probably overlap this a little bit and it will adjust the blue without looking out of place. So that is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna just bring in, in the middle colors, a touch of the blue. This is like an optional step. You do not have to do this. So trying to bring in just a bit of the purple, just in some little pockets, but very lightly and trying to blend it with all the colors around it as well. <laughs> so anytime you're adding pockets of color like this, I would basically start heavier in the middle and be soft on all sides because then it will blend the colors around it. This is how I'll show you actually quickly an example of this. Actually, Shane, can you come and grab behind me while I'm, while I'm coloring? Um, two examples of this. Um, if you go to top down camera again, that'd be great. Thank you. Two examples of this, I've got um, one of my Johanna Basford books. I'll get Shane to grab from here. He has to hunt behind me because it's there. And um, one of the Kirby Rosanis books as well, the, uh, I don't think it's Fragile World. It's, it's a different, well, Worlds, Worlds Within Worlds. Um, and then one that I did in Johanna Basford's book as well. There are videos of each of these on my channel, but I just want to show you this effect on a bigger example. Um, So this is an example where I've done this glowing effect in the sky and I've actually used a variety of colors. So we do have this video on my channel if you'd like to see this whole thing step by step. But this essentially, in order to create these little pockets of color, I followed this process that we're doing now of the glowing and then I added these kind of colors in to kind of blend them out. Now I did take a bit of a risk in doing some of these lighter colors, but when I'm doing the yellow, instead of going yellow directly against the blue, I've done a gradient both ways. So the yellow goes into the green before it goes into the blue and it goes into the orange, red, purple. So it follows along the rainbow and before it turns into the blue. Because if the yellow hits the blue straight away, they're just going to make gray in the middle and that's not what we want. So I've always tried to use other colors in between when doing that kind of blending. So there's some examples here of the different greens that have come through, some of the purples in here. And again, it's gone from purple to pink it's almost like a white and there's a bit of yellow through there as well. And so this looks really epic when it's all done, but it was actually this process just at a much bigger scale. So this is definitely a video worth watching on my channel. Um, we'll get a link to that for you guys soon. And it's one that even here, I've done all the silver and then I've actually in this same process of just adding different colors, done some light yellow on this side. And then I've actually got blue and pink over on this side. Um, so if you want to see how I did all of that, because there's a lot happening here, there's lighting and everything, um, that's all on, in that video. The other example, I believe is in this book. Oh, no, not that book. This book, maybe. That's one of Johanna Basford's. I haven't done a lot of colouring in these. Oh, there it was. <laughs> I don't do much colouring outside of what's on this channel. In this example, I've done the same effect, but on the background. And so I've faded this out just to nothing so that it's, it still has a glow, but it's actually kind of a reverse glow. 
um, around the objects. I've done the lighter colors, but here my point is more about how I'm adding this color here. Doing the middle almost like this, but in a circle is how I've actually gone and blended all these colors together. And then by lightening them out, it ends up creating a different kind of glowing effect. It's almost like a reverse glow because it's glowing out to white, but it still has a glowing sort of feel because of that shading of going dark to light. And because it's changed between two colors that are next to each other again on the color wheel or on the color cube, because these colors are next to each other, as long as you blend between them, then you end up getting a much better result rather than if I had have gone yellow and then gone straight to a blue, it probably would have made a gray and it wouldn't have looked very good. So always go around the color wheel if you're gonna do these kind of things. So that one is also another video that you can watch. Um, that one's actually using, using four different types of pencils, including the polychromos. So um, that one is a fun video to check out. Back to this. So we have added a little bit of purple in the midtones. I've got this light pink. I'm gonna try because the pink, if I mix it with the blue, will kind of just make a purple anyway. It's kind of too late to add big pockets of pink because I filled out the space with the blue. But I just want to see if we can just, again, bring in a bit of that lighter color. I might be able to, if I get a lighter pink, put some of it in the highlights. Let me just grab. This one is, what's this? 129. So I could then use this one a bit more in the highlights. So I, what I would do if you were doing this from scratch is do this sort of little, little bits at a time from the whole thing rather than diving in with the blue like I did. So add just a little bit here and a little bit here. Just gives it a bit more of a whimsical multicolor glow rather than the one color. Now, this is kind of the base of the glow. You could actually stop there if you weren't feeling confident enough to keep going, but I would always say, let's keep going because the more layers you add with this same effect, it's gonna look much stronger by the end. So I'm gonna go to my mid-tones next, actually, and fill out sort of the mid-tones a bit, trying not to touch that lighter color if I can avoid it, but trying to sort of now just fill in the gaps and blend to the darker. I tend to go back and forth a lot between my colors because if you use the middle color for a long while, you lose the shadows, you use the highlight, lose the highlights, do too much shadows. You kind of just keep balancing back and forth and back and forth. And so that's sort of my approach from here is to just keep balancing. I also didn't think about if it's the object in here that's glowing or if it's the whole jar that's glowing because that will, the whole bottle, because that will determine how I approach the top. Um, I kind of haven't really thought that part through. That's all right. So this still isn't, I'm still not pressing hard at this point. But as you build up more layers, the color fills in the gaps of the previous layers anyway. Now I do want to add a bit more lighter color and I probably need to be careful not to lose that pink as I've done that. What number purple are you using? Um, that purple. Oh, I don't even know which purple. I was. was it this one? Hang on. Is this the right purple? That feels darker. Where'd the other purple go? Oh, here it is. <laughs> this purple is 136. Let's write that down. So that's kind of the mid tone purple. Okay, I do want to at this point bring in some more of the darker colors because I feel like a lot of it's become quite flat. So I'm going to go for the black here and just bring this back in around the outside. And then I might grab the dark blue as well. Because the black does tend to lack color and make everything a bit gray. So you've got to be careful not to use too much of it. Some people don't use black at all for that reason. I don't mind black. It amplifies the glow a bit here. Okay. 
then my dark blue, which is the dark indigo. I feel like I'm getting close to what I want to do here. Don't need a whole lot more. And then what I'm going to do is actually get this white and use the white from the inside out. And then we'll see after that if we need to add anything more. The reason being that I really want to keep this white in the middle and make sure it is fading out to the blue okay. Possible that my other colours are a bit too close here to the edge. The white doesn't visibly change a lot, but it allows us to just blend that lighter blue into that middle a little bit easier. It's actually quite hard doing this on such a small picture, but like I said before, it also in some ways is a bit more forgiving. <laughs> I mean, it's achieved the glow look. That's ultimately what we're going for. I've lost my pinks almost entirely. I think overall I'm pretty happy with that. I probably went a bit darker than I intended on my dark colours. I wonder if I can bring back some of my middle blue. If you take your time a bit more than I am here as well, you'll find that you can play around with it a bit more. I mean, I think at the end of the day, that is glowing. And that's what we were going for. So <laughs> then the challenge is, and I haven't really thought about this, what we're going to do with the middle, because if it's glowing, it should be pretty bright. And we basically would lose all the lines, but then we kind of do want to see what's happening as well. Um, so, hmm. I don't really know how to approach this from here, if I'm being honest. Okay, I'm gonna go with my gut. <laughs> Maybe don't copy me on the spot in case, in case you, in case I really mess this up. Um, so I'm feeling that we do need, we obviously need a bit of color. It can't just be nothing. Otherwise it doesn't look like it's glowing. It's just sitting there. So we need to lighten it, but we need to stick with some really light colors. And then I need to work out is the, rose itself kind of glowing or is it the bottle or is it a little bit of both we just need to kind of go for like an iridescent sort of combination somehow so uh, i'm gonna feel my way through this so i'm gonna see how we go i'm gonna actually leave a very tiny rim around the outside of the bottle that we're gonna try and make white to help it feel a bit like glass but also to feel like it's kind of reflecting that light i don't know if that's gonna just roll with it here. I'm just going to color over all the middle for a second. All right, so already it looks a bit more like it's glowing because the outside room is white. So I'm happy with that. In fact, I'm going to use some white on that. That really does nothing. <laughs> this is where the, um, the Prismacolor white does a really big difference. Like you notice when you're using a Prismacolor white, it's actually very, um, very risky to be trying to do a glowing object without something like a beautiful waxy white to help you. <laughs> okay, but I'm liking this. By leaving that tiny little rim around the outside, it's got a bit of a feeling of it being glass. It's also got a bit of a feeling of it glowing. Now I've got to work out how to bring more depth in the middle. And I don't really want to go back to my dark colors because this is supposed to feel like the bottle is glowing. So I want to try and stick with the lighter colors as much as I can. Um, and I'm wondering if I just kind of fill out some of the middle here, but not necessarily the flower, because I think the flower should be the part that's glowing as well. Um, so I'm just going to darken with the same colors. It's not really darker, but just fill out a bit more around it, maybe. At this point, I'm really just making this up as I go. That's, that's half the fun of coloring, though, isn't it? <laughs> Taking a risk. Okay. So I'm making it the darkest in the middle, but not on the flower. Hey, that's a fuchsia after that discussion we had earlier about how now I'm seeing fuchsias everywhere after not seeing them anywhere. <laughs> um, okay, so 
So, so I'm just again going to gradient with the one color from light on the outside to dark on the inside. I do feel like that's kind of heading where I want. Um, I'll use the white to kind of just flatten the color out a bit. And I feel like the flower itself needs to be bright. And that's going to be really hard to do. So I think what we might need to do is bring in a paint pen. First, let's just finish the top here. Now, as much as the top would actually probably be more of a wood color, I'm tempted to just stick with our color palette that we've got. Um, although it might add a nice little contrast. Let's do it. Let's bring in, I've got some of these other colors here from our earlier palette. Um, so the 263 we'll bring in. Now, I want it to be darker at the bottom because the bottle is glowing on it. The bottle is the light source. And then I'm going to grab this one, which is 186. I don't know if that's the right choice, but we're doing it. Just keep it simple. The stars I've left white, but what I'm going to do is grab our white paint pen, which I thought I got out. Yes, I did. This paint pen, by the way, this is my Artistro paint pen. I've had this now for, I think, two years, two and a half. And today's the first time that I have seen a bit of clogged paint in it. And yet it still works really well. So I think it's near the end of its life finally, but it's lasted over two years. And one of the reasons I do like this particular brand is um, because you can see it. You can see the bit here. So not only can you see, like today I've gone, oh, there's a bit of paint stuck. Finally, you can see how much is left. But also you can see if you've mixed it enough because I find that you never shake these pans as much as you actually need to. Whereas this one, you can see the paint being unmixed. I'll show you once a bit more obvious. Let's grab. No, they're all totally different pans. Whoops. Here we go. So here, see that? See, the paint is unmixed. And that's what all paint pens are like on the inside, which is why we have to shake them. But because these ones are clear, you get a really, really obvious view. So if we shake that up, and so most people would shake about this much and stop, but let's have a look at that again. You can see it's still not, it's mixed better, but it's still not fully mixed, which is why when you use paint pens, sometimes they're really runny. It's because you've literally not mixed the paint enough. So you're just getting the water. So let's see how much we actually need to shake it. So even now, it's, it's better but it's still not fully mixed. So that just highlights just how much you have to shake a paint pen. Some of them have that ball in them to help. Um, usually the ones this size don't though, the really little thin ones. You have to shake them pretty hard to move the paint. I think this color I haven't used a lot too, so it's very full, which makes it harder to mix. Now look at that difference. There's still a bit here that's unmixed, but the rest of that is now, it's almost a different color too. But that's the difference with just actually <laughs> shaking them really, really well. So if your paint pens aren't working, give them more of a shake. But I do like this brand for that reason. It's become my favorite. And I haven't replaced it in two years. Why am I shaking that one? I don't need blue. Maybe I do need blue. All right, I wanted the white. And then just test it on your paper. Push it down once or twice if you need it to reload. And it works great. So first of all, I'm gonna clean up these stars. Or even for this, these are really small. It's actually letting out too much paint of these tiny stars. And that's like a fine tip. And then, because we're glowing, I'm gonna actually cover up the, the black. We don't have to do this. I don't know if it's gonna work, look any good, but there's just no reason for there to be black there if this whole thing's glowing. That already looks way more glowing. <laughs> and then I was thinking I might just do the the inside thing with this too, the um the fuchsia. as if it's just like radiating. I don't know that I like this now that I've done it. I'm just 
I feel like I have to get rid of all the black, but then it's really not the same colouring page at all. I'm second guessing myself straight away, but that's okay. It's glowing. <laughs> we got there, we got there. <clears throat> all right. So I, I'm pretty happy with that. What do you guys think? Um, was that helpful in learning how to make stuff glow? Maybe you don't have to do that last bit that I did because I don't know that the paint pen isn't quite neat enough because the object is so small. If it was bigger, I think you'd be able to do it and it would look easier. But I do think that that whole uh, bottle is glowing quite well. That's really what we were going for. So the paint pen is just that nice final touch to add, especially even if you're doing words or something, doing that over the black line at the end, I think really just makes it pop. So I think actually that was a good addition at the end. Now, um, we don't actually have that much longer, but maybe I can use the last few minutes just to show you uh, what would you rather learn? Would you rather, I have tutorials for both of these on my channel already, by the way, but we can either do a key and we can do like a gold or we could do a jar and I'll show you how I would color glass jars. Cause like I know books like these often have a lot of glass jars in them. So maybe Shane can do a quick poll um, to see if we would rather do glass or gold. <laughs> Cause both are sort of tricky topics, but I will tell you now, I do have, again, a very, very short video on my channel where I do color glass and I, and I show briefly how I do that. But then I have a much longer video on how to draw gold. And that's one that um, is worth watching. Even again, it teaches a lot of the blending techniques, but it, if you can do gold, you can do any shiny object. Um, so, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of comments come in for glass, but let's get the votes in the poll. Although to be honest, it looks pretty obvious <laughs> that we're going with glass. So it's pretty close. It's pretty close. 94% of people have said glass already. So I think we're just going to go with glass. Um, sorry to those of you who wanted gold. There is a big video on my channel with gold. We'll get a link in here for you so that you can go check that out later. Um, it is worth watch to help you with any kind of shiny objects, but we're going to do glass today. Um, and I'm going to pick <clears throat> which one? There's a few. Let's do this one. Um, now, the, there's a few things you need to consider with glass. For one, is it clear glass? Is it tainted glass? Tinted glass? Not tainted glass. Um, and how clear is it? Like, do you want to be able to see the objects in inside? And then, what's your? There's, there's a lot of factors. We'll try and keep it simple. The first thing I would recommend, and actually, Shane, I need my phone from you <laughs> for this, is to find yourself a reference photo and then kind of work from that. So that's exactly what I'm going to do to show you exactly the kind of reference photo that I would be looking for. So I'm just going to Google glass jar because we are coloring a jar. The reason I do that, and even for reflective things, it can be really good to get yourself a reference photo because a lot of it is about how the light bounces off an object. And unless you've done this a lot, that's a really hard thing to predict. So by finding just simple pictures like these, of glass jars, we can then follow these as a guide of how the, the light actually works. So this simple Kmart one, actually I don't, I don't need to click on it because it would have been, oh, well there it is. This can give us, and there's a few different pictures here, a really good flat shape, not too different to our shape. And there's a lot of lighting happening on this one. I don't know how clearly you can see that on the camera, um, but it's darker in the middle and it's very bright on the edge and there's a few slightly lighter versions on here. Um, what I might do just to try and show this in more detail. Um, this is something you can do to help you sort of analyze photos is I'm just going to jump in like, um, I have a Photoshop camera. I don't know if that's going to work for what I want. Just trying to find some kind of quick app. No, I have to log into that. I don't have a login. Um, if you have like Photoshop Express or something, that's good, but I don't seem to have, I should have that. Yes, Express. It might even just work in the editor on the phone. What I'm trying to do um, is find something that I can adjust the colors so that we can see the differences in the colors more prominently. So let me just open this and then I'll put this on the camera for you. <laughs> I haven't used this app in ever really. Okay. So I've just put this into the app and I just want to go to adjustments. This is actually a really good trick too. If you have a photo that you're trying to copy and you're finding it hard to see the values, like you're finding it hard to see the light and the shadows, you can put it into any app or even probably just in the photo editor 
and change it to black and white or even increase the contrast. So here we've got contrast here. We can then adjust it brighter and darker. And actually that's not how contrast is supposed to work. But anyway, by making it darker, we can a bit more obviously see the shadows there. So I might even turn the shadows down because then you can see where the spots are. You won't then copy these colors exactly. But if I turn the blacks down as well, I'm trying to do this more for the camera for you guys to see the differences. See how now you can start to see those differences between the dark areas and the light areas a lot more easily. That's really what I'm trying to do here is trying to make this a more useful reference photo by giving myself really clear shapes to work with. So by doing this and editing the photo, you can actually do a lot of that quite easily. You can also change if we change the saturation and turn the saturation up or down, it helps you to work out the colors. Now, because it's glass, there is basically no color here. <laughs> so we could just use a gray to make this, or we could use a blue, or we could use any color if you're wanting like a tinted glass. I feel like because of our palette, I kind of want to do a bit of a green tinted glass, which means that we will do everything a little bit darker. But what it means is in here, instead of doing white, light gray, dark gray, and then like your black, we will do the same, but instead of light gray, we'll use light green. Instead of dark gray, we'll use dark green. And that should end up having the same look, even off this reference photo, even though it's not green. So bear with me on that. Hopefully that makes sense. If you do want to actually see what it would look like, we could probably find an option in here that would color. Oh, probably because I turned the saturation right down. <laughs> okay. Well, that hasn't helped it at all. I wonder if there's a way to update snow color um, tint. Here we go. We can tint it. No, it's not helping. I think because this picture is um, really good. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I've turned the saturation up. And then we can tint it. Whoa, that was a big tint. So if we go like that, that's now our green glass. So this can be a really cool way to kind of test those colors before you actually apply them. We could use that instead of using what we had. I think you kind of want a bit more of a gray green. So I'm pulling my vibrance and saturation down. The shadows are already down as far as they go. And that. I don't know what the setting's supposed to do, but it's helping us to make it a bit darker again. So you can really see the different gaps in the color there. So we're going to leave it at about that. So that now becomes a much easier reference photo for us to copy. It is a bit of a strong green. I think it's not really the bottle green, but we can always darken that with the pencils anyway. Um, but this will help us with there. So now what I want to do is try to just copy these shapes into this very, very, very small picture. <laughs> So it's up to you whether you prefer to do the highlights first or the dark first. Generally, it's easier to do the dark first because if you do highlights, you can't see them. If you were doing this as like a digital painting in say Procreate, it's almost easier to work from dark to light or I don't know. It's actually kind of then gives you either option because you can start with a middle tone because we're starting with a white page. Adding white doesn't really help us do anything. So um, we're going to start with our darks and we'll just see how we go. Um, now, sorry that I've been ignoring the comments for a while. I'm sort of just in my zone, but I, Shane hasn't interrupted me to say that you're saying anything. So I'm just letting you all talk to each other. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to start. They've got a very, very dark outside edge here. So I'm actually, this probably isn't the darkest color I'm going to use. I'm at the moment just using from this list, my hooker green and my light phthalo green. I don't think we're going to need much more than that, but I'm going to start with those two. So we're going to use our dark green right around the outside edge in a pretty solid, see how these is quite a defined solid color. With your shading, when it comes to shiny objects and glass, you'll notice there's a lot more jumps from dark to light really quickly. And if you blend them smoothly like this, it's not going to look like glass. So you do need to pay attention to that in your picture and actually see when does it have a slow change like here? And when does it have a sharp change like here? And this is something useful if you're doing metals and things as well, um, to notice the sharp changes. 
So you can then use a bit more pressure at some of those points or just try to keep the sharp changes to make it look more realistic. Now here, she's actually got a few little dots, which I think kind of symbolize the edge of the glass to try and help us. So we're gonna follow those because we do have quite a dark edge. And again, I'm not actually using my darkest color yet. I sort of go almost in the mid tones because you can always make it darker. What does the bottom look like? Okay. So now I need to just, let me just save this picture out so I can see the whole thing. Um, close. I'm gonna get to that. I should probably also put my phone on airplane mode. <laughs> just in case any family or anything decide to message me private stuff while we're on stream, that would be really awkward. Okay, I'm gonna move this over. Cool. So we have... Someone's asked if this is live or pre-recorded. <laughs> I think um, me answering this question answers your question. <laughs> I noticed a few people actually jumped in and clarified. So thank you, everyone. It is definitely live. It's flattering that you think it's pre-recorded. <laughs> I definitely don't or feel... Is it? I definitely don't feel organized enough for it to be pre-recorded. Okay, so I've got a very, very dark trim around the outside. Now, our picture is pretty small, so it's going to be interesting to see how much we can define the things here. I'm going to basically ignore the leaves at this point. We're going to pretend they're not there. We're just working on the glass because the leaves in here are going to be kind of hidden by the glass anyway. So we'll add them in at the end with a few little details, which means we just need to not press too hard with the glass. Um, you'd think it'd make more sense to draw them first. Maybe it would actually, now that I say that. I'm gonna quickly color in the leaves. We're gonna just do them in a dark green. It's handy that it's a green glass and green leaves. That's, in fact, I'm probably gonna have to make these darker anyway, because if this is the color of the glass, they're gonna disappear. That's all right. I just wanna get some color on them. Super, super quick. All right, great. So we do have, I might, which color should I, I might, this one feels too bright for a lot of this. So I'm gonna actually stick with this color and just gonna lightly shade to try and start to define these different areas. So there's, it's about a third in, there's a big strip of the darker color, but it's not the darkest color. I'm just gonna draw a line down here. Doesn't have to be a perfect match either because the glass, like it just depends on where the light's hitting. But yeah, we have a pretty like consistent one color thing happening in the middle. Then on the side, we actually have a few little pockets of light, which is a bit tricky, but that's okay. And then we've got a bit of a gradient here from white to the dark color here as well, white to the dark color. So we're gonna leave that light and we're gonna try and sort of shade backwards from the edge into that. That might even be enough to kind of make that point. Glass is one of those things too, that when we add at the end the highlights with white, it makes all the difference. So then I'm just looking at, is there a few little pockets that are a bit darker? They're probably just imperfections in the glass, which kind of adds doesn't really look like glass yet, but we'll get there. And I do think we're going to need some darker colors in this. So first, I'm going to get my second, my lighter color, and now start to sort of work in this blending a bit too. I even think I won't, probably won't have, oh, no, there will be a bit of white, but I'll come back with the um, paint pen to do that white because it's reflecting. So I actually want that to sit on top of the color underneath. So we'll come back with the white paint pen at the end. Now the light also comes a little bit down the bottom here. This has, it would be, would be great to have all this top section because you really see the changes in the light, but we don't have that. So we're kind of just working from halfway down. And then I do think I need a darker green. So let me, oh, I'll just hit my elbow. 
Oh, it wasn't quite my funny bone, but it still hurts. <laughs> All right. Um, what's this one? Pine green. That's not really darker than the hooker green, though. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to bring in the dark, like the black. Because there's actually, I will, a few little bits. Because there are some black trim right on the edge here. It's got a bit of black in it. So I'm just going to, not the whole way down, but see here, and then about halfway down again, it must be reflecting of something. There's a, the thing with things like glass and metal is that there is no colour to them. They're just all reflection. So I really don't want to add too much black just in some of those key points. This is looking nothing like glass right now. <laughs> it's fine. It'll get there. Um, okay. Pine green feels darker, but I think I'm just imagining that. I think I need to come back to this green that we have in the middle. My picture is darker than their picture. I feel like the light green isn't actually the right green either, but I'm just overanalyzing at this point. So I need that defined line. Because I'm not reading the comments, I just feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Trust the process. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> Again, this is something that's, it's harder with the polychromos. It's not impossible, but you kind of can't work backwards. Like you can't go light on top of dark as well as you can with waxy pencils. I'm just making excuses, really. <laughs> just hit it with a paint pen. Well, I will in a minute because that's going to really change a lot. I just want to, I shouldn't probably bring in the black in the middle, but I just... I wanted to. I'm just now going back and forth, trying to find the spots that I feel like don't match this, basically, which is a lot of it, if I'm being honest. But it's not... It, I can see it's a lot the same. The main thing is I don't have the whites in, and that's what the paint pen's going to do. Maybe it's just time to bring in the paint pen. Where's my white pencil? I feel like we should always try it with the pencil first. It's even possibly possibly worth bringing in a Prismacolor white pen on top, white pencil on top, to just define some of these areas a bit better, even if that's not the pencil you're using everywhere else. Or a luminance white, they also are really good. Just to try and highlight these areas a bit more. It also kind of makes it a bit glossy by having the white pencil on top, which covers up what's inside, which is kind of what we wanted to do. It just means that the white paint pen's not going to be so stark and obvious when it is added. So I'm really just going back and forth looking, where's more white? Add some more white. Where's more dark? Add more dark. And hoping that we get somewhere. If you pick a different reference photo too, you're going to get a different result. Like this one has a big dark strip in the middle. A lot won't have that. A lot will be more based on the outside edge. So if you're wanting to showcase what's inside more, you might not choose a picture like this. You might choose a reference photo where the light is different and therefore it's mostly the outside um, rather than this one. It's got so much light bouncing off it that not only is it a little bit harder to do, it'll probably look cool when it's done, but it means that what's inside has basically disappeared. I've also picked a dark green. If you were to do this with a very, very light gray, the glass itself would be more subtle and what's inside will get showcased a little bit better. But I think at this point I'm ready to bring in the paint pen. <laughs> oh, someone made a good point. Under the cloth would be shadow. Yes, you're right. I have completely dismissed the fact that this has a cloth around the top. So we do need to kind of just darken that whole area under there. That's probably what's not helping me with this looking realistic here. that help a little bit okay I'm gonna bring in the white I feel like the short video on our channel with the how to draw glass 
turned out a lot better than what I'm anticipating this is going to look, but I have, I always lack self-confidence at this point. So let's just trust. <laughs> so we've got the big white strip. I do want to do that with this, but what I might do is draw it and then be cheeky and kind of smudge it out, which could end badly or well. No, we're okay. And then I'm going to over it again. Um, that's just added to that slight gradient, basically. And then it also curves in a little bit at the top. So we kind of do want to have that just curve a bit at the top. It has a slight bigger patch at the bottom. And then we've got the same on the other side. The other side, the obvious bit isn't as much in the middle. So again, I'm going to smudge. Probably, there's probably better things rather than my finger to do that with. But here we are. And then I'm just looking at where are the white bits? Now, depending on how realistic you want it, is how much sort of smudge and layer versus just embracing the lines. There's a white line over here. There's a bit of a white line down the bottom. I feel like we need to smudge some out to the side there. Same with this one. I kind of want to bring some out. I'm treating the paint pen just like you would paint, I guess, in being on top. I do feel like we need to make these white panels thicker because that really is what's happening in this picture. There's a lot of white. There's a lot of contrast in this. I've totally lost what's inside because I picked a dark jar with a lot of contrast. And then we've got a little white spot over here. I'm not loving this, if I'm being honest, but I think I'm also very close to it, so looking at it closely makes it hard. There's also a really little white rim on the edge. On that side only. I'm not sure if that's looking like glass. The, the big shadow in the middle doesn't look as good to me as I thought it would. Um, but we got there. What I might show you is the other example where I've done the exact same approach, but with a different reference photo and not attempting to do the super dark green is, um, let me grab. It was in another Johanna Basper book, 30 Days of Creativity. Here we go. So here is another version of this same process, but in this example, and I'll be honest, I think that looks a lot better. <laughs> in this example, there's a short video on my channel of how I did this one. We didn't have this big stuff in the middle, like what I've got here. So you can actually see the object better. So I've focused on, I think the real key points here that did match this was having the really dark rim. And then this one's just got sort of a subtle color in all the background. And then we've used the white over the top. This is quite an old picture now, so it's kind of faded. But having the white going around the edges is what creates that reflective surface here I've gone a bit more extreme and I feel like maybe that's where it's let me down. Um, and I think having the big strip in the middle, I'm not that impressed with. I think if I was to do this again, I'd probably aim more towards this. Oh, one thing I have done here that is a nice little just touch that you can do, you don't have to, is the little stars to as if something is bouncing the light off. That might be something that you don't have to do, but you could add something like that, say, on the edge here. Although the edge we've got against white, but I'd suggest practicing your stars before applying it to your picture, just to make it really feel like the light's bouncing off there. Um, yeah, look, I, I, I'll i be honest, this isn't my favorite. I probably need to practice glass a bit myself, but hopefully just <clears throat> how I've approached this and my technique to taking on a challenge like this, hopefully is enough to kind of inspire you and maybe have a go or photocopy it on an extra piece of paper if you really don't want to mess up your coloring book. I also see coloring books and, and sketchbooks kind of in the same way of like every time you're trying something, this is an experiment and they don't all have to be beautiful finished pages. Some of them are like, oh, this is where I was figuring this out and that's really cool. And so like for me, I will look back at this and go, okay, so what would I do differently next time? It's not a bad picture. I actually still like how it's turned out, but it's maybe not what I was expecting. And that's okay because I've still learned something and I've still went through the process and I'm trying to figure out what makes this picture look like glass or what does it, why does it not look like glass even though I've copied a reference photo? So those are kind of the things that you can explore on your own as you figure it out. Um, I should just finish this one off with our um, 
fabric at the top. So I might just grab this. What's this color? Is this one on my list? Pink carmine. When did I get this out? Oh, we used that up here. Let me just add this to my chart. So one, two, oh, it's on the back. There it is. Okay. Um, just to tie these together, we're just going to color this fabric in here. And then I'll show you some quick shading on this. We're probably not going to have time to do any more. It's funny that in this two hours, I've only done three small pictures. That's pretty typical, but at least we finished the pictures. That's the main thing, right? Um, I'm going to do the rubber band as just like a darker color. And then what have I got here? 263. This is probably, oh, that's a good dark color. Just might sharpen it. Small details you need sharp pencils. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here with the shading is just try to think of which areas are going to be lower or higher with the fabric. So these loops where it's going. So let me give you a bigger version of Oop, bigger version of this, right? So this is kind of what the picture has. So the areas that are up, the higher bits, they're probably going to get more light. These areas in the valleys are the parts that are going to be the most shadowed. So we kind of want to do our darkest point there and then fading out up to the light part with whatever colors we choose. We've already got the other color on there and that will help it to create a bit of a 3D fabric look if we kind of use that as our rule and kind of go light to dark that way. Hopefully that makes sense. So same here, darkest point in the valley and then lighter as we get up. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. The only other part I'm going to do dark is directly under that elastic. But again, this picture is so small. It's going to be really hard to do much of that. So we'll just do like basically one line. <laughs> and then we're just going to color in these darker areas in all the valleys. It doesn't give us a lot of room to work with because these pictures are quite small, but it also, again, forgiving. <laughs> trying not to do too much of this because otherwise we'll just lose that color of the fabric really quickly. It's such a small area, but there's a, a subtle change there. Here we go. Are you want to call that done? <laughs> oh, Jill's here. Hi, Jill. Nice to see you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it is a bit Christmassy with the, the green and the red. I didn't really think of that. I just grabbed the pinky color because it was a color we've already used. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Um, I kind of was just working my way through a bit of this as you have seen. But the good thing about this is that even, I mean, the more I look at this jar, the more I like it. So I don't hate it as much as I first did. Um, but the point of this really was to show you my process. I've tackled things that I don't tackle often and um, trying to work out how do we solve the problem? Of how do we get to these results with the knowledge that we already have using reference photos, just working out how to do the glow, learning the gradients. So hopefully all these little pieces are enough to maybe give you confidence to try something that you haven't tried before or to just um, start thinking outside the box with some of these things rather than just coloring in a shape. Can you add a second color? Can you try to make it glow? Can you um, try to make it shiny? <laughs> something like that. So. Hopefully these tips have helped. Um, I am going to stop here because I know that some of you would happily color with me for more than two hours, but it has hit lunchtime for me and that's when I start to fade. Um, I'm actually doing pretty good at the moment, but it doesn't take long before the, the combination of being on camera and only having coffee because I haven't really drunk enough of my water sitting here and not eating eventually catches up to me. <laughs> so 
That's why we're calling it. Um, but I would love to see if any of you have colored along or done something else while we're doing this. I'd love to see those. Um, if you are not in my members discord, we also do have a free Facebook group where you can share what you're working on. So please feel free to check that out. It's called coloring with Sarah and it's not just for coloring. You can do any kind of arts and that and show us that there as well. Um, but if you are on Facebook, you can check that out. If you're someone who wants to join our, our members discord, there is our YouTube memberships is how you do that. So we have some different tiers. Um, the bronze tier gives you the cute emojis and the pencil next to your name, like you're seeing with some people. And, um, that's something that is just a fun way to be a part of the community. But if you want access to the discord and some of the other bonus features, then we have that available for silver and above. So our gold members, they get to get access to coloring pages and there's a bunch of other things in there as well. Um, and then our teal members get to jump on a zoom call with me once a quarter and we get to just get to chat and it's a two way thing show each other our artwork. We've seen some amazing stuff in the last week from the people that joined the last call. So please feel free to join all of that. I will have more sneak peeks coming soon from my new coloring book. I'm going to be sharing them in the community posts. Um, again, my members are getting more of a look at those because that's just one of the benefits of being a member. So I've been sharing a lot of the work in progress in our discord and the golden teal have had some early access to some of those. Um, but thank you everyone for joining me. Thank you for helping me choose the right page that we could actually finish some stuff because I don't know where we would have, how far we would have got if we were working on those other pages. Um, the video that's coming this week on my channel is me learning how to draw. So coloring is something that I do feel pretty confident in. I feel like I can use reference photos and stuff really well. Drawing things from scratch. Um, I can draw certain things really well, I think, but then there's other stuff like people, characters, faces, hands, a lot of those things that I've always wanted to learn. And so I've spent the last three months trying to learn them. And we're going to show you that whole progress and all of the challenges and the mindset things that I went through this weekend. And as a part of that too, um, you get to see a bit of, I talked with Jazza a lot about his process in drawing characters and he's actually taken, not what we filmed, but it helped inspire him and he has now reworked his um, How to Draw book. It's a book that I actually had, but it's a book so old he doesn't even get royalties from it, which is really sad. Um, so he's actually re reworked it all into a course that's like um, a masterclass in how to draw characters. And so, um, oh, there you go. Shane's just posted for it. He's given us a code so that you can actually get 10% off, um, that you can actually check that out if you want, or you can wait till my video comes out on uh, Friday or Saturday this week. It also depends where you live. Uh, Saturday, Saturday, right? <laughs> we usually do it Saturday our time, which is Friday in America time. Um, you get to see how I talk through with him and that will give you kind of a little bit of a taste of what's in his masterclass. So if it's something you want to learn, feel free to check that out. Um, also, yes, I see some people in here saying thank you to Shane and Natalie who are both with us today. They've been the ones answering all your questions, keeping the chat safe and free of spam and also posting all the links as I just talk and be like, Hey, here's the video. <laughs> Cause they have to go find it. We haven't planned this. Um, and also afterwards, what we might do, um, you've got the shot that we've had during the video of this stuff, but we might put in the description of this video. Once it goes up, we'll pop in the description, the list of all these so that you can write them down and access them. And the color palettes that I use that are all, my desk is a mess, by the way. <laughs> it's, doesn't take long. It doesn't take much. And I'm looking at it going, ah, oh. it's, uh, it's gotten out of control, but, um, we will put that once this, once we end the live stream, the video will be up for people that want to watch the replay. And I would love it if you could come and just, if you've enjoyed this, leave a comment and leave a like, just saying, what was your favorite part about this stream? Because it will help us to then for new people that are watching the replay to see that people were here and to see because the live replay, the comments just works differently. Um, so please come tell us what your favorite part was today, what you'd like to see in a future stream. Sorry, we didn't get to say hi to Moscow today. <laughs> He's around somewhere. We've lost him. Uh, we haven't lost him. And um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of it. Um, if you have any other questions, please don't keep chatting here with questions because I won't see them. We're about to lose the live chat, but please feel free to comment on the video. I'll stick around for the next 20 minutes while I eat lunch to just answer some comments and um, answer any questions that I missed. Thank you so much for joining me and enjoy the rest of your day or evening or whatever time it is for you. <laughs>